openly in the most vulnerable way about the joint statement we put out regarding the allegations against Mike Bickle. It's time for The Line of Fire with your host, biblical scholar and cultural commentator, Dr. Michael Brown. Your voice for moral sanity and spiritual clarity. Call 866-34-TRUTH to get on The Line of Fire. And now, here's your host, Dr. Michael Brown. Thanks, friends, for joining us on what's going to be a very important broadcast. I'm only taking calls on topic today, the situation surrounding Mike Bickle, My comments regarding that, the joint statement I issued with seven other leaders, eight of us together last week regarding the allegations on Mike Bickle, only taking calls concerning that. But I'd love to hear from you who differ with me, who feel like we've not handled things correctly or have a question about our statement, 866-348-7884. I'm not here to argue or debate or defend myself, but rather pursue truth together with all of you. One quick announcement. Last night, uh, put together the lead article for our Frontline newsletter, which will be sent out just a few days from now, the end of the week, sent out to our team for feedback. It resonated just what I was hoping for. So I know it's really going to encourage you. If you're not getting the Frontline newsletter, this month was the record for the most signups we've ever had so far. And the month isn't even halfway over. So sign up today. Frontline newsletter right on our homepage, thelineoffire.org, the line of fire.org. Do it right on the homepage. It's free and it's all digital. It'll come your way once a month and then every week we'll update you on our latest articles and videos so you won't miss anything. Um, again, I'm, I'm going to be as vulnerable and candid as I can be. I, I always am open, especially sitting here on talk radio. It's the nature of the beast to just sit and, and speak from the heart, not put on some show. But all the more I want to be vulnerable today. I I do not like being called into these situations. I, I'm much more at home preaching repentance to the whole body and saying, we've sinned, we've fallen short, and all of us get on our faces together. I, I'm much more at home with, with that. I, I'm, I'm much more at home calling for the refiner's fire to work in all of our lives. I, I do not look at myself as I'm the one that's going to fix and correct everything. I, I serve the Lord joyfully. Every day, I can't wait. Literally, I can't wait to do radio. I've been doing daily talk radio 15 years. When I go to preach, I can't wait to preach. Teach at a school, I can't wait. Time to write, I can't wait. I love the calling of God. I embrace it joyfully. Going to the nations. I, literally, I can't wait to get on the plane. I tried to be one of the first getting on the plane. It was a 14-hour flight. I can't wait. I love to preach. I love the calling of God. This is the one thing that I would rather not do. This is the one thing, get involved in these situations where we have to stand together to call for discipline in the body, or I have to lead a certain charge. I'm very uncomfortable doing it. I understand why people reach out to me. I understand that by God's grace, I have a certain testimony in the body. But come on, every one of us, the closer you get to God, the more unworthy you feel. You, you, you know that we've been made worthy, right? That we're new creations in Jesus. I don't walk around with a sin consciousness. I'm a a new creation in Jesus. I'm a child of God, a son of God, destined to be with him forever, set apart as holy, made righteous. I I live with that consciousness. Praise God for it. I hope you do as well. But on the other hand, boy, in every area of my life, I'm conscious of how merciful God has been. All the stupid things I've said or wish I didn't say this or do this or been immature here or there, you're just conscious of the goodness and mercy and grace of God. So I don't come in strutting. In, er- in every area of my life, the longer I walk with the Lord, the more I walk with a limp, whether it's prayerlessness or lack of knowledge of the word, or, you know, someone says, Have your- has your thought life been perfect? Whose thought life has been perfect? Has every word that's coming to your mouth been perfect? We're recipients of the mercy and grace of God, so we seek to set high standards. And by God's grace, I seek to set an example, but I don't like getting called into situations like this, but it happens every so often. And when the Lord is the one calling me and others in the body make the appeal, I, I step forward in that way. But please, you know, some of you say, why don't you call out this one, this one, this one? It's not my ministry you're calling to do. It's, it is no one's calling to just sit around and call out everybody and be the policeman. Because what we do is we're so selective. We do it with the camps of those that we don't like. We don't do it with our own camp. And we often don't do it with our own lives. I I once heard a quote attributed to Smith Wigglesworth. I think I read it. 
that if you claim to have the gift of discernment, Wigglesworth said, practice it on yourself for six months, then you'll never practice it on anybody else after that. So to say it again, I'm much more comfortable by saying we've sinned, we've fallen short, let's get on our faces and repent. However, there are things that must be dealt with. And, and when there are sins with leaders in particular that cross certain lines, they have to be dealt with. It is for the righteousness, it is for the health of the body. But I just want to lay out first my heart. When I write a book, say, on hyper grace, it, it's because I see a need in the body. And then everywhere I go, I see the abuse of this. And then leaders are coming in crisis. What do we do? And then I feel the Lord assigning me to do it. I don't just search every day. Let's find the latest error. Let's find the latest wrong thing. Let's correct it. Who, who am I? to? Who appointed me or you or any of us to do that? Yes, we're watchmen on the wall, but we have our assignments and the first thing we do is we search our own lives and, and, and then those closest to us. So I, I just want to start there. And I remember, it was, what, was around 87, somewhere around there that, that Jim Baker had been exposed for, for a sexual fall. And then Jimmy Swigert, I, I used to love Swigert's preaching. Swigert was really, and I don't say this to attack Jimmy Swigert. I became very uncomfortable with his preaching because he was ridiculing Baker and blasting Baker. And I just said, don't, don't do that. Don't, you, you know, the old saying that the, the blade of grass that grows too high gets cut down. Don't set yourself up. I'm now I don't do that stuff. And I'm the Holy one. And you're all a bunch of wretches and you're something wrong with you. It's like, no, just let's correct sin, but let's do it with humility. Galatians six, considering yourself, lest you're also tempted not in some self-righteous, arrogant way. And, of course, it turned out that Swigert had been in sin all that time and in a persistent and longer way from what we understood that Jim Baker had been. So I, I say those things up front. The fact is sin must be rebuked, and especially when there is persistent sin that crosses certain lines in the lives of leaders. It must be rebuked. And 1 Timothy 5 is plain, those who continue in sin. So this now unrepentant continuing in sin must be publicly rebuked that others take fear. So just just very briefly, my own history here, and then I wanna I wanna address those who feel that I sinned against them by stifling their voices, those who've told me, some respectfully, some angrily and disrespectfully, that I hurt them or I was trying to silence the voice of victims. I, I want you to hear exactly the comments I did make, and then I'll take ownership for them and speak from my heart to those who feel that I hurt them or sinned against them. And the phone lines are open. If you're one of them or you want to give me a piece of your mind, 866-348-7884. We'll talk about why we issued this joint statement. We'll talk about why we said that Mike Bickle would be disqualified from future public ministry. We'll talk about the amazing redemptive mercy of God and how people can be restored to ministry in all different kinds of settings. We'll talk about uh, a line in the, in the joint statement about the prophetic history at IHOP. So we'll cover all that going on. If you haven't read the statement, it's on our website, thelineoffire.org. Just click on read and you'll find it within the first a few lists of articles there. So thelineoffire.org, just click on read and you'll be able to read it. So just my history quickly, uh, I was called by leadership at IHOP KC on November 3rd, uh, no, November 2nd, asking if I could fly in Saturday, November 4th, and speak to the congregation November 5th. So consult with the leadership team and speak to the whole congregation on November 5th. Uh, I fully understood going in it that it's no win. In other words, you're going to have people upset with you on either side. And whatever you do is going to be faulted on certain levels. So this was, there was no self-aggrandizement, nothing in this for any other reason except to serve. I felt the responsibility to do it. I was able to make it work in schedule. Had Nancy's blessing to go share with my other team. In fact, some of my team felt that I was going to be called to do this. So I did it with fear and trembling before the Lord. Uh, and... We'll talk about some statements I made that Sunday, November 5th. Actually, play them for, for you to hear this. But uh, about one week after being there, when it was clear that the firm, Stinson Law Firm, that had been brought on 
by IHOP KC to do a third party investigation when it was clear that that was not going to work and that the advocacy group and, and those who had come forward saying they'd been sinned against by Mike, that they were not going to participate. I immediately went back to the leaders and said, okay, you must bring in another outside firm. Now, my understanding at that point was that things were starting, that the investigation was starting, that this was not the time for us to be airing opinions on social media because there was an investigation. Everyone who felt they had been sinned against, everyone who had a grievance, had a place to now go and let it now be sorted out in a, in a, in a right and righteous way, uh, impartially, et cetera. That was, that was the goal. I never, dream, I never dreamed for a split second that we'd be now approaching the middle of March and this still wouldn't have happened. I never dreamed of that for a split second. I never thought that I'd be talking about it now in this way as, as an ongoing thing, except for that investigations happen and here are the ramifications of it. Never dreamed of that. But immediately when it became clear, uh, I went back to leadership and said, okay, you have to. This plan's not working. You must bring in an outside third party. If grace doesn't work, guideposts, some nationally known, another party must be brought in. The leaders did not feel it was time to do that yet. Now, at that point, Thanksgiving was coming in a couple of weeks. Then I was going on vacation with family, and then I was going to India. So I could not be involved with day and night phone calls and interaction as I had been doing. So I said, okay, I have to shift my involvement from official to unofficial, plus, plus, because I could not get the LT to do what I was asking, I had to step back in, in that regard as well. I then wrote the strongest email I could on November 21st saying, you must do this now. You must bring in the outside third party. You have to do it. And, and, and then I kept being told, okay, we're working with this one. We're working with this one. We're trying to make this happen. We're not resisting. We want to see it happen. It dragged on and dragged on finally into early January. And then at that point, I made a public statement said, okay, it's not happening. I will gather leaders together to ask them to oversee this just because I've given my word once I've been called in that, that, uh, that if it doesn't go right, then I'll shout it out to the world. So I followed through to seek to do that. And that's exactly what happened. You say, well, why are we now in March? I'll tell you that and then talk about the question of whether I was trying to silence people's voices. I want to get this all out and then move on. I want to get it all out and move on for the glory of God. We'll be right back. Is brain health important to you or someone you love? then please take a few moments and let me present a most amazing product formulated by leading physicians from Mayo Clinic and Johns Hopkins Medical. This is Michael Ellison, founder of Trivita. I watched my mother, who was wonderfully gifted and such a hard worker for most of her life until her later years. And then it was so sad to see the effects of neurodegeneration. Even to the stage, she did not recognize her son. Did you know that two out of three Americans aged 50 years or older experience some level of cognitive impairment affecting their lives? I was determined to find a formula that would support brain health. I commissioned three of the most talented and competent physicians to build a formula that would not only support mental health long-term, but would contribute to feeling brighter, more alert, and with less anxiety each day. After considerable research, a formula was developed, and now I have the joy of presenting NeuroShine exclusively from Trivita. The formula ingredients are equivalent to the science studies shown to improve focus and concentration, enhance mood, and memory acquisition. It has also been demonstrated to help prevent cognitive loss. I encourage you to call a Trivita wellness consultant and discuss how NeuroShine will support your brain health or someone you love. To feel better and brighter, try NeuroShine for yourself. Order today and use promo code BROWN25 to receive 25% off your order. As a new customer, 100% of your order proceeds from your first order will go to support the Line of Fire radio broadcast. Call 1-800-771-5584. 1-800-771-5584. 
or online at T-R-I-V-I-T-A. Trivita.com. It's the Line of Fire with your host, Dr. Michael Brown. Get on the Line of Fire by calling 866-34-TRUTH. Here again is Dr. Michael Brown. Welcome back, friends, to the Line of Fire, 866-34-TRUTH. Only calls on topic today. And uh, if you interact with me on social media, I don't see 99.9% of comments posted on Facebook or on YouTube. Sometimes I'll see more posted on X, uh, but I have to pull away from social media just because of time constraints and working on all the projects we're working on. So it's, I, I would love to interact. I, I love seeing comments. Uh, I, I, and when folks have challenges or critical comments, I, I would love to interact. I mean, it's my nature to want to either debate or interact or explain or, so I'd love to. It's just, there's not time for it. I, I imagine you could understand that as well as, as busy as your schedules are and as demanding as social media can be. So you may be posting thing and how come you haven't responded to me? Well, 99.9% of the time it's because I never saw it. And if I do respond, you may respond to me, and I'm not going to know for six months because I'm not there. All right? So now's a good time to call, if you like, 866-34-TRUTH. So back in January, uh, I, I got back on and said, okay, I've been working behind the scenes this entire time to try to move forward the third-party investigation. It's not happening. So I, I will keep my commitment. I will get other leaders together and uh, ask them to oversee an investigation and work with a third party that the advocacy group is happy with, that the attorney representing many of those who uh, say they've been sinned against by Mike Bickle, that uh, he would work with readily, et cetera, and, and we'll, we'll do our best to make that happen. So that's what I did immediately. I began to gather leaders and people really praying about it. Some immediately said they'd be in, try to get nationally respected people or people well-known on the prayer movement, uh, some not as nationally known but well-known in the prayer movement or respected by parties on all sides. And we're putting that together. And then we got word that there was some progress potentially being made with parties, different parties working behind the scenes to agree on a third-party investigator and for them to agree on, on leaders. I thought, wonderful, it's far better than me doing it. I've got no authority here. I'm just trying to keep my commitment and honor the Lord. So I stepped uh, step back as that's been developing, but as that too has dragged on and dragged on now for a couple of months, as folks have been working behind the scenes, a number of us felt, okay, we have to say something. Now, now please understand, we do not have any governmental authority in this issue. I do not, the signers of the joint statement do not have any governmental authority here. This is simply our understanding and our perspective before the Lord to share these things for whatever it's worth as elders in the body. Ideally, these things would be handled locally by local churches and local leaders. And those things that take on international proportions that affect the body worldwide could bring in leaders and a wider scope. So I do not claim to have any authority here. The quicker I can get out of the picture for good, the better. That would be my joy, all right? But just understand how these things came about. All right. So let me play two clips for you. The first from November 5th. Uh, this is one statement I made where I brought up social media. This is at IHOP KC with the understanding that the investigation has started, that there was a portal that people could go to that could report sin, abuse, etc. cetera, uh, that we didn't need to be fighting this out online. And then one statement from less than a month later, shortly before I went to India. So let's play the first statement. This is from IHOP KC, November 5th. In coming in, there was one demand that I had if I was to have any involvement, and, and it was that a third party has to be brought in, a, a respected, independent party that can impartially investigate and give a safe place to those who have allegations, accusations, to those who say they've been terribly hurt and damaged to give a safe place for them and a safe place for Mike that everyone can come forward. Before I was called, that had already been done. The leadership team had already taken that step. So when I got here and heard that, I was tremendously relieved to hear that. 
already people texting me and word getting out and different things and saying, well, this is just damage control. This is not being done for damage control. This is being done to bring the truth to light. That's why it's being done. It is not being done to protect the team here from lawsuits. The whole goal is to have a serious law firm investigate truth because there are very serious allegations that have been made. It, it is, the goal is to have an organization I'm not familiar with. I, I don't deal with these types of things in terms of which organizations do which. But another outside party involving that's had decades of dealing with very intense situations so that this particular law firm has dealt with serious accusations of sexual abuse and clergy abuse and, and really can provide a safe haven for everyone involved. So here's my appeal. Here's my appeal. The leadership team has said that this is the first major step. When everything is done, and the findings are determined, they will be released publicly. It's very important to know that. The findings of this firm will be released publicly. And that's, that's the goal in all of this, for truth to come to light. But I want to make this request. You may have an opinion right now. Keep it to yourself. It does no good. You may want to show how prophetic you are and you're figuring it out. Grow up. This is not the time to be doing that or thinking about well, my name or my reputation or anything. There's a process in place and leaders have said if the process is insufficient, they'll go another step. All right. So that was the, that was the first statement. Uh, I want to make sure that I don't cut off the next one. So we may have to play the next, the beginning of, of that. So, uh, I hope you hear right there, I was not trying to silence the voice of victims or, or keep suppressed people's hurt and pain. My understanding was a process had already been set in place that was now being announced. Now, when I saw that that process was not working, one week later, I was on the phone saying, you gotta, you gotta make a change. And then two weeks later, in writing, you have to make a change. You must bring in a different third party. But the whole goal was, let's, let's not litigate this online. What's the use of me sharing my opinion, you sharing your opinion? Let's use social media constructively. In other words, if I'm going to speak, I'm going to try to speak constructively, asking others if you're going to post, post constructively, rather than airing opinions, because now there's a way that those that say I'm, victim, I'm a victim, I've been hurt, there's a way now for you to air that. There's a way for you to deal with that. There's a way for you to get that out. There's a way for Mike to be held accountable. Let's go through the right process. So saying that, I, of course, that's what I hold to. Of course, that's a value. Just read Jacob James, the third chapter. Maybe I'll read it on the other side of the break about the tongue. I mean, it's devastating the damage we do with our tongue. Uh, it's devastating how much false witness is, is posted. We, we bear false witness against each other and slander each other and tear each other down and, and, spread rumors and innuendos and just, I think this, I think that. And we really need to zip that. However, in saying that, as this has dragged on, as the mess was much bigger than I had understood, my words were construed as you, you keep your pain to yourself. And if the only way to compare notes to someone else is through social media, you just have to zip it. I truly regret that that's what happened because that was never my intent. So I 100% stand by our calling to use social media responsibly before God. Hey, look, if I take an hour a day and went on social media, I'd find people bearing false witness against me every day, posting things just blatantly false. You're doing this to cover things up because you're trying to keep your financial arrangement with these guys. I mean, nonsense, idiotic stuff like that. You wouldn't even think of in a million years. Or just false stuff. This one did this and this one. And it's, it's all false. And then just our attacks and our mean-spiritedness. However, however, I truly regret not understanding the full scope of what was happening and how many had stories they needed to tell. And the fact that they felt suppressed, I truly regret that. We'll be right back. Hey, 
Hey friends, Michael Brown here. My delight to serve as your voice for moral sanity and spiritual clarity. We are living in such urgent times today, friends, that all of us are in the line of fire. There's a target on your back. There's a target on my back. If you simply seek to live by biblical values or just conservative moral values, you could be canceled. You could be cast out. You could be put down. You could be silenced. I'm here to say, friends, that I am not about to be silenced, and I don't believe you are either. It is time for us to stand up. It is time for us to say enough is enough. It is time for us to push back in Jesus' name, not fighting the way the world fights. No, overcoming evil with good, overcoming hatred with love, overcoming the flesh with the power of the Spirit, overcoming lies with truth. And that's what we're here to do on the Line of Fire broadcast. And friends, it's not just a broadcast. It is a movement of people around the world, God's people standing up saying enough is enough and saying, Lord, here we are. Send us, use us. I want to urge you today to join our support team because we are on the front lines together. And we are literally touching people around the world, in America, in the nations, in Israel. And together with your help, we're going to amplify this voice and spread this movement around the globe. So... I encourage you, go right now to thelineoffire.org, thelineoffire.org. Click Donate Monthly Support, thelineoffire.org. Click Donate Monthly Support. When you do, you become a torchbearer. We immediately send you two great life-changing books. We immediately give you access to many classes I've taught. Others have to pay to take those. You get them for free exclusive video audio content, a new audio message every month, an insider prayer newsletter, 15% discount on our online bookstore, so much more. Join our support team today. Go to thelineoffire.org. Donate monthly support. This is how we rise up. It's The Line of Fire with your host, Dr. Michael Brown. Get on The Line of Fire by calling 866-34-TRUTH. Here again is Dr. Michael Brown. Thanks, friends, for standing with us. Thanks for our support team, our torchbearers who contribute a dollar a day or more and help us put forward our three R's, revival in the church, gospel-based moral and cultural revolution in society, and the redemption of Israel. If those values are important to you, that's who we are. That's what we give ourselves to day and night. Let's partner together. Let's accelerate the pace that we can see Jesus return. Go to the line of fire, dot org. Click donate, monthly support. But before you do, Read the list of ways that we will sow back into you and ask yourself, is that worth a dollar a day? I think you'll say yes. All right, I, I want to play the second clip. This was from the beginning of December before I went away to India, just giving an update. And it's, it's only six minutes, the whole clip, but I'm going to play a relevant part that's just two minutes long and then comment once more. Go ahead. Hey, hey friends, it is December 1st, 2023. When, when you watch this, this, a lot more things, things may have happened and come to light, but I want to be as current and upfront as I can. When I got involved, when I agreed to come in as an outside advisor to the situation at IHOP KC and the serious allegations that have been brought against Mike Bickle, from day one, and this is the verse that I used preaching at IHOP KC on that Sunday morning. Uh, from day one, my goal has been for the truth to come to light. John 3, 21, let everything come into the light. Let the truth be known. Where action needs to be taken, let it be taken. Where healing needs to come, let it be healing. Where repentance, confession needs to come, let it happen. That has been my position from day one, and that has never changed. Even though I had to step back from official involvement, having spent many, many hours privately talking to leaders on all sides, doing my best to understand fully the nature of allegations, the issues that were being raised from people within the ELT, outside the ELT, those in, quote, the complaint group, colleagues of mine who were very critical of the process and critical of the ELT, I spent many, many hours interacting with people privately, so this has never stopped. But because of travel constraints about to leave for overseas and not being able to interact on the level I needed to in an ongoing way, I had to be unofficial. Plus, uh, it's not up to me to tell the ELT what to do, hence my unofficial involvement. But my pledge has remained the same. If the process was not going forward, if things were being stonewalled, then I would shout it out to the world. 
You say, well, why haven't you shouted it out to the world? Things are just dragging on. And why are you trying to silence accusers or victims? God forbid I try to silence anyone. My public stance has been don't gossip. Don't post public speculation. And if you have serious accusations, there is a right biblical way to bring them. And, and there are processes through which this can be done. That remains my position. All right, so that's what I said. Those were the two comments about social media. First, I don't have any authority over your life. Some of you may respect me. Some don't know me. Some don't like me. But I don't have any authority over your life. That's the first thing. I appreciate the, the fact that many took this as a serious exhortation. The idea that I was trying to silence people who had been sinned against was the opposite the, there, there, was a, there were processes in place or that we were working on to make sure that they had a voice. And that's what I've worked on. A week hasn't gone by in the last three, four months where there hasn't been something I've been involved with, making sure that, that those people have a voice and there can be a hearing and things can be dealt with properly and there can be righteousness and there can be accountability and there can be healing and there can be ministry. But right after that statement went up, a pastor that I, I know and love, that knows and loves me, that highly respects me, called me, and he was furious. I mean, he was furious. He was angry, and he was telling me to just shut up, and I had no idea what I was doing, and that I was doing more harm than good, and that, that this ministry was like a cult, and everybody needed to post their stories and put them out, and I had no idea what I was doing. And, you know, we, we had quite an honest conversation and obviously, because he's only been loving and respectful to me in the past, I knew that, that he was grieving and that he was angry and that what he said I was doing was hurtful. So to everyone who was hurt by my words, to everyone who heard me saying, you don't have a right to be on social media expressing your pain, your disappointment, your anger. You don't have a right to tell your story. And, and you were hurt by my words. Please forgive me from the heart. It was never my intent. And if I lacked wisdom in presenting things more fully, more comprehensively, understanding more of the situation, please forgive me. What I don't apologize for is the call to say, let's not gossip on social media. I don't apologize for saying, let our communication be godly and edifying. I don't apologize for saying, that social media is not the place for us to all just speculate without knowledge and information. Let this be the goal. Read through the book of Proverbs. Read through the book of Proverbs. See what it says about the tongue. See what it says about our words and post in accordance with that. You say, but Dr. Brown, there were people, we only heard their stories because of social media. I understand that. The goal was never to suppress stories. And the longer this has dragged on, I understand stories came out because the right process was not put in place. Behind the scenes, I was continually working for that and others are working for it. And, and hopefully, hopefully progress is being made for the, the final right investigation to take place with different people working together and other leaders overseeing it. By God's grace, may that be the case. All right. But, but hear me, friends. There, I never had any idea that Months later, we'd still be having these conversations. It, the goal was that everything was going to get out through the proper process in November. Okay, that was the goal in the, in the first week of November. And here we are now. What's today? March 12th. This is unimaginable. And what I didn't recognize was how many people that had just been part of the ministry now were saying, wait, I have a similar story, not about sexual abuse, but this was wrong or this was wrong. And just felt the need to connect with others. So I apologize for lack of insight or wisdom to include broader categories in what I was saying. To say I'm not saying this or that. But I don't apologize by saying we need to step higher with social media. I don't apologize for saying let's not bear false witness against one another. I don't apologize for saying social media is not the place to adjudicate this case. I do not apologize for saying that we've got to stop tearing each other down and attacking each other and, and, and hurting each other. It doesn't glorify Jesus. James, Jacob chapter 3, that many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. 
We all stumble in many ways, anyone who is never at fault, and what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example, though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body. It sets the whole course of one's life on fire and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear frigs? Neither can a spring produce fresh, a salt spring produce fresh water. Okay, a couple more, a couple more comments, and then we'll go to the phones. Um, on what basis did we say that Mike Bickle was disqualified from public ministry? Again, we don't have authority in this matter. This is simply saying this is our understanding. And for people saying, where is the accountability? Where is that? Where is something? We felt a responsibility to speak and say something as these processes and the, the proper investigation and people working together is just dragged on these, these many months. We do not have authority. We're not God's policemen. We're speaking as elders in the body, those that sign the statement with whatever respect is due to us or not. God knows. All right. But when you read the, the New Testament, it doesn't give exact guidelines for many, many things, exact guidelines for exactly what a church service would look like in every case, exact guidelines for exactly how governments and structure should work. It doesn't give exact guidelines for what to do with a leader who sins, repents. I, I want to proclaim in the strongest possible voice, redemption and restoration are wonderful, beautiful things that all of us live, by. every single one of us lives by the grace of God and redemption and restoration. Every single one of us with out exception. We live, we live with grace and mercy, redemption, restoration in Jesus. Salvation is all about that. Our walk with God is all about that. Every single one of us. I know people that committed adultery, man committed adultery in ministry, truly repented, didn't get caught, came clean, truly repented, reconciled with God, made things right with his spouse, is back in ministry today. Their marriage is stronger. Their ministry is stronger. I know examples like that. Yes, even pastors and senior leaders. Now, in some circles, in some circles, pastors, senior leaders are disqualified from becoming pastors or senior leaders again if they've committed adultery. But I can attest to cases like that where I've seen this. What the New Testament does it doesn't tell you the exact process, step down for a year, two years, five years, what restoration looks like, right? Because these things are organic and, and it's not going to be the same in every single setting. But what the New Testament does give us is standards, standards that leaders must be above reproach and have a good reputation with outsiders. If you have crossed lines repeatedly over a number of years, so the allegations of Mike Bickle against Mike Bickle, prophetically manipulating young women and even minors into sexual acts with him over a period of years. And then in addition, upon being confronted, still not fully confessing, still not fully repenting, still denying, there can be glorious personal restoration for Mike with repentance. And he can be closer to Jesus than he's ever been. But with these lines crossed to be above reproach, be fully trusted in public ministry and our judgment that, that can't happen. Just like if someone was a pedophile, got gloriously, wonderfully saved, born again, right? Committed to sin before they were saved, got gloriously saved, born again, holy, righteous person. They'll still never do children's ministry because there's a certain reproach associated and there must be wisdom there. So it's based on that. There are hundreds of lines you can cross and with true repentance, be fully restored and go back into public ministry. Hundreds of lines. But there are other lines, when you cross them, you bring a lasting reproach that now breaks trust in the future. That is the basis for understanding. We'll be right back.
Are you or a cherished loved one finding it harder to remember names, stay focused, or maintain a positive outlook on life? Well, you're not alone. I'm Dr. Paul, and I have a critical health alert. Did you know that approximately two out of three Americans age 50 and older experience some level of cognitive impairment affecting their daily lives? It's a serious issue, but there's hope. Introducing Trivita's NeuroShine, brain support supplement developed by Mayo and Johns Hopkins trained doctors. NeuroShine is specifically designed to nurture the healthy development of brain cells and provide defense against neurodegeneration. Trivita's NeuroShine contains Bacopa Mineri, shown to enhance verbal learning, delayed word recall, memory acquisition, and reduction of anxiety. Studies also show an impressive 85% improvement in focus and concentration. Our clinical formulators included lithium orotate, a specific salt known to enhance mood, making you feel better and brighter. It also demonstrated to prevent cognitive loss. Trivita's formula includes panathenic acid, playing a crucial role in regulating and synthesizing several neural pathways, ensuring comprehensive support of your cognitive health. Protect and enhance your cognitive health today with NeuroShine. Experience the difference in mood, memory, focus, and concentration. Trivita, your trusted partner in wellness, brings you NeuroShine to support a brighter and healthier mind. Sold only by Trivita. To feel better and brighter, try NeuroShine for yourself. Order today and use promo code BROWN25 to receive 25% off your order. As a new customer, 100% of your order proceeds from your first order will go to support the Line of Fire radio broadcast. Call 1-800-771-5584. 1-800-771-5584 or online at T-R-I-V-I-T-A Trivita.com It's the Line of Fire with your host, Dr. Michael Brown. Get on the Line of Fire by calling 866-34-TRUTH. Here again is Dr. Michael Brown. Welcome back, friends, to the Line of Fire. Thank you, Trivita, our co-sponsor, for your loyalty to us and for your generosity to us, your generosity to our listeners and viewers, you're giving them such great discounts and your generosity to us as a ministry, pouring so much funds back into us to help us get onto more radio stations and reach more people. Neuroshine is part of my daily regimen, one of the supplements I take every day. As soon as I heard the ad on our show a few months ago, I've been ordering it and using it. Now check it out. Uh, along with your other uh, questions, call... 800-771-5584. It's 800-771-5584. Or go to Trivita.com. Use the code BROWN23. All right, I'm going to go to the phones very briefly, uh, very shortly, and, and take some calls before we're done. So again, the idea of being disqualified from ministry, public ministry for life, would mean that lines have been crossed of such a nature enough times, then only exacerbated by being caught rather than repenting and then not fully repenting upon charges coming to say that in the future, because of that, a credibility cannot be established fully again. Prophetic ministry cannot be trusted fully again. Questions about what might be happening behind the scenes, because remember, we're talking about sin that continued, according to reports, for many, many years behind the scenes while active ministry was going on, right? So it's, it's one thing if you find someone was leading a double life, they come clean, they repent, they get right with God, they get right with people. There's true repentance, there's true restoration, there's true accountability, and they're relaunched into ministry and service. That can happen beautifully and wonderfully. And for anyone struggling, come get help. Come get help. If you're struggling, come clean to those who have authority over your lives and, and, and get help, go through proper restoration, and then move forward and everybody will be blessed because of it. You will be and everybody else. And then other lines are crossed in this case where you say, okay, you cannot be above reproach and have that good reputation that's needed to be in public ministry because of this. Again, it's simply our judgment based on our understanding of scripture. We do not have authority here. We're simply speaking our understanding for the sake of the body. Lastly, uh, there's a statement made that we see the broad strokes of prophetic history associated with IHOP KC as being true. I drafted the initial statement, then Dan Juster uh, added, took away, Patricia King added, took away, Sam Storms, different ones, had input, 
And then the other sign that we signed along with Michael and Terry Sullivan and Jack Deere. Jack has published an addendum raising further questions about prophetic history. I was not involved with that part at all. Uh, but Dan was very closely involved. Some of the others were very closely involved. And Dan said, look, I, this is not something that Mike came up with. He walked into it when it was first prophesied to him about a prayer movement and praying for Israel. He, had, he did not have a burden for Israel and that had, did not have a vision for prayer. So this was something bigger than him that he happened to walk into. Just like Samson had a calling despite his personal sin. Just like throughout scripture, God works things, even births things through people who are not right or there's a mixture or there's something unclean. That sin has its consequences. We talked about that yesterday. That sin will still have its consequences. However, that was the understanding that yes, there have been things that need to be questioned over the years and the devotion to the prophetic history in some type of cult-like way, absolutely destructive. But having said that, that's not a hill for me to die on. That was not a major part of the statement. But uh, Dan and some others would say, look, we were there, we've witnessed, we've seen things outside of Mike, before and after Mike, that we cannot deny in terms of a prophetic calling and destiny. With that, we love the prayer movement. We love houses of prayer. We affirm the global prayer movement that's come out of this. We affirm houses of prayer that love Jesus and worship Jesus. We're, God forbid that anyone hears the statement is saying that if you're in a house of prayer or something associated with IHOP, that you're all part of a cult. No, we we're never saying that. We said cult-like tendencies developed within IHOP because of Mike's leadership style, because of us having to memorize prophetic history, because of certain elitist mentality that developed on some. But there are thousands of good-hearted people. Many served in the leadership there. Thousands of good-hearted people, Jesus-honoring people that have been part of that and that are part of prayer movements around the world. We don't make an idol out of 24-7 prayer, but if from your heart you're a worshiper, you're a prayer warrior, let, let that incense continue to ascend, not in the sense of bondage, but devotion to the Lord. Your ministry at the throne is important, and we value it, and we affirm it. All right, with that, we go to the phones. We will start in Michael in San Diego. Welcome to the line of fire. Yes, thank you. My question is about the panel of Christian leaders that you're putting together. It seems like it's taking a long time to come together. Uh, one, why doesn't why don't you just make the eight leaders from the joint statement the actual panel? And in conjunction with calling for a third party like Guy Post or something, why doesn't the panel itself examine and judge the allegations and thirdly do you think the panel should judge or um, examine only Mike Bickle or all of IHOP KC like Jack Deere suggested okay so it thank you for the questions number one it hasn't taken time to put a panel together at all that happened within days or, or initial people that were willing to be part of it within days of my statement uh, in early January what happened is the the investigation that would be overseen has to be done in coordination with the advocacy group, uh, which is working with attorneys or an attorney representing many of those who've come forward with allegations against Mike. Uh, in other words, there can be no investigation without their participation. So we've just been waiting on them. Uh, that's, that's the only delay. There was no delay putting things together. I, I got on that immediately. That's the first thing. Um, and it's honoring them because they have been working to try to find the right investigator uh, that would be the right person that would have credibility that could be seen as impartial. And then they were continuing to reach out uh, with leadership. Is this been leadership transition at IHOP? Can we do this together? And together, can we agree on leaders whose verdict we would submit to? So to take it away from me, because I have no authority in the matter and for them to handle that's the best case. And I hope that's what's going to happen. Uh, so there's been no delay there. That's that was done very quickly. Uh, the delay has been, that there's a process that they're working on. The folks that are working with those who've come forward saying they were sinned against, uh, working with leaders that were representing them, working with an attorney that was representing them. Uh, so everything has been in deference to them, in deference to those that, that would be classified as victims and others. It's all been done in deference to them. That's only delay. Um, the second thing is the, to do a proper investigation is far beyond the ability of me or any of the others, we, uh, y there are all kinds of serious allegations and people who must be heard 
If things are disputed, there may be requests for text messages on phones, for email records, for all kinds of things. So that's, that's not my calling. That's not the ability that I have. We do not have the ability to stop what we're doing and, and go to different locations and meet with people face to face and then have the meetings with Mike. We've tried to reach out to Mike and ask, can we talk, can we interact? And he said, well, I just can't do it. This is not the right time. Maybe it means because of attorneys, et cetera. Um, so that's, that's not a role. And no, nobody appointed me to do that. All I'm simply trying to do is, is accommodate what needs to be done for the good of the body. The last, the last thing, Michael, is, is that um, ultimately, as the investigation comes through, there may be multiple investigations at the end with different groups involved. But uh, as that goes, it takes its course, it could well be that serious concerns come up about other culture within IHOPKC over the years or other sexual abuses that were covered up or other things like that. That being the case, then yes, there should be further investigation into all of that as well. But thank you so much. I, I really appreciate the questions very much. Uh, time for one more call. Ezekiel in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Thanks for calling the line of fire. Uh, hey, hello, Dr. Baca, Dr. Brown. Um, I just want to say I've been a long time listener. I've listened to a lot of your books. Uh, I love you. I have much respect for you, but what I'm about to say to you, I say it as a, as a younger man to an elder in the faith. Yeah. But, um, you know, to me, I was listening to your, the last one you had, is there is the whole charismatic thing corrupt? Mm -hmm. And I was listening to you talk, and it's hard for me to take you serious because, like, you're a leader, a leader in the charismatic Church and I'm a soft cessationist. I, I speak in tongues and everything, but I'm a soft cessationist. And how can we take you serious when you refuse to call out heretical wolves, blasphemy wolves like Kenneth Copeland? And I believe, like in Corinthians, where it says uh, your works is like uh, gold, silver, or straw. Mm -hmm. I believe on the day of judgment that that you're gonna have some straw mixed in with your gold because you refuse to call out. Yeah. Blaspheming heretical wolves. And, yeah, so, so I'm, I'm, just, I'm just cutting you off only so I can respond, but let's finish this conversation. Thank you for speaking respectfully and honestly. Thank you. I, I wish everyone would call like this. Thank you, my brother. This is a right way to handle things. Number one, I can guarantee you from personal experience and knowing people for decades that some of those that the critics call out as heretical wolves are brothers and sisters in Jesus. Remember, Ezekiel, there are many heresy hunters who say, I'm a heretic, I'm a wolf, etc. Okay, I'm not even saved. So just remember that, all right? That's one. Two, I've told Justin Peters publicly, if the charges you have brought against Kenneth Copeland of doctrinal heresy and others, if this is true, then he is a wolf. If they're true, he is a wolf. What I said was, based on his doctrinal statement and friends who've known him for decades, I believe he's in error, but not a wolf. But in any case, may God search all of our hearts. May we all walk in the fear of the Lord.